So yeah, this is definitely going to be a different type of video for me. Um, usually I try to come on here and be very optimistic and positive and friendly and everything else in between. But today is going to be a bit of a rant because um, I've been working all week and um, when the news hit, um, I wanted to come on and talk about it, but I just simply didn't have time with uh, work commitments and traveling. But um, I'm sure everybody by now has heard the news. Classic rock fans are probably um, still reeling in the news that um, Fleetwood Mac has decided to fire Lindsey Buckingham. Now you think, okay, well that's not confirmed, true, um, and, and a lot of what I say is um, what you're hearing on the news. So there's kind of two sides. He, he either decided to leave the band or, you know, the more popular opinion these, as of today seems to be that he got fired. Um, and I'm just really uh, kind of outraged about it, if you want my honest opinion, because um, I, I think that there's a really sinister plot behind it, and I'm going to get to that in a minute. But first of all, I just want to set the stage here that I am a fan of this band, and I've been a fan of the band um, really from the moment Lindsey Buckingham and Stevie Nicks joined Fleetwood Mac, but subsequently, I was 10 years old at that time. Well, actually, I was 8 years old at that time, so I really didn't have a long period of time where I had an opportunity to be a fan prior to that. Um, but in subsequent years, obviously I'm in, in my 50s now, so you know through those years I have learned to love every incarnation and I think there's 13, 12 or 13 different incarnations of Fleetwood Mac. I almost have liked every single one of them with a couple of exceptions. But um, this one really stinks, in my opinion, and it really reeks of a money grab um, and corporate madness. And, and I'm going to talk about that here in a little bit, but I really wanted to set the stage that I am not opposed to bands making a change for the, for the good of the band, or if someone steps aside and they replace a member and they carry on. It happens all the time. It's happened with Genesis many, many times, and you know they carried on and had a fruitful career. But those were decisions that were made, um, you know, when, when a decision is made that someone's going to leave the band and the band decides to carry on uh, without one of their principal members, well, that's something everyone agrees on and, and you move on and, and you either like them or you don't. But when you hear someone was fired, it really does raise some questions because um, more or less, I think what happened is in the 1990s when uh, uh, Lindsey Buckingham had left Fleetwood Mac, they went this route before. He made a personal decision to leave the band sometime around after Tango in the Night. And um, they decided to carry on like they had done many, many times. And that I had no problem with because, you know, they were still young. Uh, they still have many, many years ahead of them with uh, album sales, new records, tours, etc. They had every right to carry on without Lindsey Buckingham. Um, however, that was a disaster. You know, they replaced uh, Lindsey Buckingham at that point with two people whose names escape me at the minute, uh, something Burnett, and I don't even remember the other guy's name, and released an album called uh, Behind the Mask, and it was dreadful. It was absolutely dreadful, and the tour that followed that was a miserable failure. Ticket sales were horrible, and that lasted one whole album and about three quarters of a tour. So whatever you're thinking at this point that somebody within the band decided it would be a better idea to have Lindsey Buckingham not in Fleetwood Mac. I don't buy it for one second because they've already been down that road. They know that it's not likely to be very successful without the lineup. Uh, Stevie Nicks and Lindsey Buckingham have become integral to that band. There's no doubt in my mind. But anyway, um, the, before I get to the reasons why I think he was let go, uh, I just want to show you a few things, because this is a music channel, I like to come on here and show things, so I don't want to make it all about me ranting. Um, so I just want to show you that I am a true fan. So I pulled out a few things that I want to share with you, um, and you know, just to kind of support the idea that I'm not talking out of my ass here, I feel like I have every right 
and every bit of knowledge to come on here and talk about different incarnations of Fleetwood Mac and those that have worked and those that have not. You know, going back, what I'm going to show you here, just because it was easier to pull out and I haven't shown these yet, I've shown you uh, my Fleetwood Mac vinyl collection. I've shown you my Lindsay Buckingham vinyl collection. Um, but I have not shown you my Japanese mini LP um, CD collection from Fleetwood Mac. And I believe I have just about everything you can get. Um, starting with uh, Peter Green's Fleetwood Mac. They, these are all, up until a certain point anyway, going to be these Japanese mini LP absolutely beautiful sounding wonderful remastered um, exact vinyl replica beautifully done um, uh, you know there isn't a format out there that sounds better than these Japanese CDs so that's a video a topic for another video I suppose to get into the the nuts and bolts of what makes these special and great uh, but for now I just want to show you these uh, Peter Green's Fleetwood Mac obviously they started out as a blues band in the 60s you guys know the history of Fleetwood Mac those that are watching this probably already know a lot about Fleetwood Mac. Um, here's Mr. Wonderful. These albums came out, I think, within just a few months of each other, back when bands didn't wait five years to record an album. Uh, then we've got, uh, what do we have here? Then, then Play On. Um, this is These are absolutely stunningly done, and, and I'm going to go through them quickly, and I apologize if you wanted to see more of these CDs, but at least you're getting a taste. And then we've got the infamous uh, Kiln House here, one of my personal favorite uh, Fleetwood Mac CDs. I absolutely love most of their work, really. I mean, there isn't a bad album among them, except for Behind the Mask. Then we've got Future Games, and I really honestly don't even know if these are in the correct order. I didn't take the time to go on uh, Wikipedia or Discogs and look. I don't care. Um, you know, so don't don't write me comments that they're in the wrong order. If they are in the wrong order, we've got Bear Trees. Um, we've got uh, Penguin. And these are all these Japanese shims. Uh, the super high definition. I mean, it's just, they, they sound amazing. We've got uh, Mystery to Me. Uh, another great album there. And we've got the last album prior to Lindsay and Stevie joining uh, Heroes Are Hard to Find. Uh, what's very interesting cover but such a good album so then we you know we go on to the more modern stuff we've got uh, what do we got here let's see just from the beginning we've got these are the deluxe three CD editions on these uh, Japanese mini LPs this is the self-titled 1975 album the first album with Lindsay and Stevie which everybody knows and loves We've got um, the Rumors. This is a, a surround sound edition. This is not a mini LP. This is a jewel case um, in the uh, surround sound of Rumors. I do hope that they do a deluxe 3 CD edition of the uh, uh, Rumors uh, at some point. That's the only one that they haven't done. We've got Tusk, um, another uh, amazing album in its own right uh, to, to come out with something so different after Rumors was quite a shock to a lot of people. While it's not my personal favorite album of Fleetwood Mac, it certainly uh, earned its spot over the years. Um, and then we've got uh, Tango, oh, I went a little out of order here, here's Mirage. Uh, one of my very personal favorite albums from Fleetwood Mac. I adore this album. You've heard me talk about this album a few times. You heard me talk about it when I did the alternate Mirage from the previous record store day. And I really don't want this video to go super, super duper long, but uh, here's Tango in the Night. Here's another uh, two. These are this is a Mirage and this one are two CDs, two CD editions in the uh, remastered Japanese mini LP series. And, and the bonus content that's that are on those are on the alternate Mirage, alternate Tusk, alternate uh, Fleetwood Mac. And I think of this record store day here next week, we're going to get alternate um, Tango in the Night for Record Store Day, so that's neat. Um, uh, quickly, uh, again, I want to show you that I support Stevie Nicks. I support her solo career going all the way back to when Lindsay and Buck, uh, Buckingham Nicks, um, a, a great introduction to the two of them. They sound fantastic together. This is an amazing, amazing um, quality uh, recording of it, uh, the best I've ever heard. And um, I urge you, if you don't have a good version of this album, look for this because it blows away the vinyl version. And the CD version that I used to have was crap compared to this. Um, 
Stevie Nicks. Uh, well, she's just done two of these, but I have other albums that I could show you up into including her greatest hits and her 24 karat gold and everything else. Uh, these are the ones I pulled out to show you. We've got Belladonna. This is a three CD edition in the Japanese mini LP series. And um, we've got a uh, two CD version of Wild Heart in the same Japanese mini LP. And I even got, um, you know, trying to be consistent, the most recent uh, Buckingham McVie um, Japanese mini LP CD when that album came out last year. Wasn't a huge fan of that record, but it was still decent. Why am I not showing you anything from Lindsey Buckingham? Because there aren't any. Once again, his career and his talent and his contribution is almost always overlooked. And it really, really rubs against the grain. Yes, I'm a little bit biased because I am a big fan and I think he is the heart and soul of Fleetwood Mac since 1975. They have about eight years of being a band prior to him and Stevie joining Fleetwood Mac, but let's see, 1975 to 2018, how many years is that? And then we go back in time and look from 1975 previously, and you think, okay, well, that they have been a pretty important part of Fleetwood Mac for a very long time. So again, getting back to the point of this rant video is the fact that um, he was fired, and I, I'm really not making my thoughts very clear here. Um, so forgive me because I, I'm not scripted. I do not come on here and do edits. I'm just talking off the top of my head. But um, I believe that when they came back and reunited after a couple failed albums, uh, well, at least one failed album for sure, St uh, Lindsey Buckingham probably said, I will come back, uh, but he probably got a bigger cut of the pie, if you will, the, the money portion of it. He probably did well. And I'm only assuming, I don't know that, I doubt very many people know exactly how the pay breakdown is sorted out through Fleetwood Mac. Now all of a sudden they sign on to this Live Nation, Irv Azoff, this slime ball that keeps ruining classic rock bands. He's ruined Journey, he's ruined the Eagles, he's ruined, um, who else can I think of? Um, there's probably a long list of classic rock bands, Foreigner. Um, others that he dips his slime ball toe into and people label him a genius you know to fire vital members of these bands and replace them with two other people and he, he labels himself and other people see him as some sort of revolutionary kind of guy and it's all about money it's all about corporate it's all about branding these bands and they they fall for it the other principal members probably got that spiel from Irv Azoff and Live Nation said, hey, you guys are shortchanging yourself. You can make a lot more money. And he's getting the biggest piece of the pie. And really what it all boils down to is really all he's concerned about is making more money for himself. And, you know, then he goes and markets these bands as better than the original. And they're still selling out concert tours and doing their thing. And frankly, I am over it. I will not pay to see Chicago, Styx, Journey, Foreigner, The Eagles, um, Steely Dan, now Fleetwood Mac, all these classic rock bands that have ruined themselves by, you know, and, and, and granted, some of them, of course, with Glenn Frey, you got, if you want to carry on, you're going to have to replace Glenn Frey. But even Don Henley himself calls Irv Azoff Satan, and he's like, we're working with Satan, but, you know, he's our Satan. And it's like, wait a minute, you know, that, that loses the integrity of everything that you ever stood for when you started a band in the first place, when you wanted to just do it for the music and for the love of music. Now it's become a corporation and it's become a money grab and it's come, become a machine. And I have no doubt in my mind that that was the reason why the rest of the people in Fleetwood Mac decided to fire Lindsey Buckingham. Um, now, that's not out there. It's not a fact. It's not a statement. Um, everyone's very politically correct so far and saying the right things that Lindsey Buckingham um, decided he wanted to do other things and he didn't want to tour as much and he, blah, 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 blah. We've heard it all before, but it all sounds like the same canned responses that we've heard over and over from the same mastermind that keeps ruining classic rock music. And frankly, I think everybody could do themselves a huge favor, and instead of shelling out $100, $150 to go see these mediocre cover bands doing so their own songs 
but with totally different lineup and maybe one or two members of the original lineup, don't do it. D save your money, go buy a record or a CD, invite your friends over to your house and have a party and enjoy the old music that way because you are not doing classic rock any favors. You're not supporting the artist. You're supporting the corporation. You're supporting Live Nation. You're supporting this Irv Azoff, who is Satan. And frankly, I'm over it. I'm totally over it. I will not purchase any more Fleetwood Mac music. I will not purchase any concert tickets. And I've had it. Now, again, Lindsey Buckingham gets no credit. There's a, there's a select group of fans, uh, like my friend Rockboy680, who really can appreciate Lindsey Buckingham and his talent. I've just shown you, I'm a fan of Bob Welsh. I'm a fan of Christy McVie. I'm a fan of Stevie Nicks. I'm a fan of Mick Fleetwood and uh, John McVie, the best rhythm section that ever has been. But, you know, this stinks. This smells of corporate greed. And Lindsey Buckingham, here's all this music that's being remastered, redone. And you go into a CD store or a music store, you won't, you won't find Lindsey Buckingham solo stuff. You won't find it. I just watched a video from uh, David Unboxes. And David, I mean, I hope you see this as a channel plug because I really do like your channel. I think you've got amazing taste. But you showed all that Fleetwood Mac stuff. You have a great collection of Fleetwood Mac stuff. And you've got a great Stevie Nicks collection. Then it comes to Lindsey Buckingham. You showed one thing. You showed this his first album and because you've probably heard the song trouble that's probably the one and only song that people know uh faithfully of uh, lindsey buckingham's solo career what gives i don't understand it you claim you're a fan of fleetwood mac and you are a diehard but i'm not sure i really i mean i don't mean to sound harsh i really like your channel i like what you do i love your music taste i've learned things from you but in this case, you're just missing the boat because I've shown you, I've gone, you can go back on my channel. I've shown you all my Lindsey Buckingham uh, vinyl collection. I'm going to do it again. Here's Law and Order. Here's Go Insane. Absolutely brilliant, brilliant album. This is on the level of like Beach Boys. This is on the level of uh, Brian Wilson good. I mean, it's spectacular. And then we've got maybe his masterpiece of all time out of the cradle. Uh, just absolutely love 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 this album and it's like pulling teeth to find it anywhere you can't find it on seat well maybe in the bargain bin but to find a new copy of it remastered redone triple cd japanese blah whatever good luck you're not gonna find it then we've got this one who's which has never been put on vinyl uh this is uh under the skin you can tell it's getting under my skin you know where is his music and why isn't it taken seriously then we've got uh, Seeds We Sow, one of his other masterpiece type albums, a double album that came out in, uh, forget it, I don't even know the year, but it was probably five, six years ago. And then we've got Gift of Screws, another really good album. Um, it, this one maybe is a little darker in tone, but um, fantastic. You know, you could, if you're lucky and stumble across this in a garage sale of some sort, you know, you could get this double uh, CD, DVD combo of him live. This is uh, at the Bass Concert Hall. Fantastic, brilliant performer, writer, producer, arranger, uh, guitarist. I mean, where is his music? Where is the appreciation? Where is the loyalty? You know, he's just tossed aside like it doesn't matter. I can promise you that would not happen to Stevie Nicks. Promise you. And I'm sorry to rant for 20 minutes on this video, but it needs to be said that this Herb Azoff has ruined, he has destroyed classic rock. And Fleetwood Mac is yet another victim of his slimy greaseball tentacles. And the guy needs to be eliminated from music, period. Don't support Live Nation. Don't go to the concerts. Don't buy new music. Forget it. Now, I'm not saying it's bad. It may be fine. But, you know, it's a brand. You're buying a brand name. You're not buying the original material. It's just not right. And if this proves to be true, and if my, I guess you could call it conspiracy theory, proves to be true, well, then you're going to come back and say, well, Vinyl Collector James, you're a genius. But if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Maybe Lindsey Buckingham will come back and say, I quit the band. And, you know, but I don't even know if I'd buy it at that point. 
I really honestly feel he was just edged out and it's all about money 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 and if it's anything like last time if it's anything like behind the mask and there was an album after that say you will that he came back on but then Stevie wasn't on it that was a joke slightly better than behind the mask but not much um, this is a band that you just can't you can't take that 40-year legacy that they've built up over the years since the 1975 self-titled album you can't go back and it worked it worked in all those different 11 different incarnations but those days are over you can't do it anymore and now it's not the right reasons for it it's not because we want to be better and we found a different mix it's not it's not like that I have nothing against Mike Campbell from Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers who's stepping in now to replace Lindsey Buckingham on guitars. Uh, he's a fine, fine guitarist. He did very great work with Tom Petty over the years. Great guy. I think he'll do a fine job. Neil Finn, I'm a fan of Crowded House. I'm a fan of Split Ends. I think he's got a great voice, but doesn't sound very Lindsey Buckingham, and it certainly doesn't sound very Fleetwood Mac to me, but we'll see. Uh, but you won't catch me at the concerts. You will not catch me buying new music from them because this has got corporate greed written all over it. And I'm really, really sick of the fact that the music industry has really uh, bashed and ignored Lindsey Buckingham all these years and not given him the credit that he's deserved. So say what you will. I know he's an odd guy. You watch him you, you look, talking and he is an oddity. He looks like he's got a couple loose screws. Uh, I, I can't lie, but you know, the guy, in my mind, if you want to call someone a genius, don't call Irv Azoff a genius like this real music observer. There's a channel out there called The Real Music Observer, some jackass that comes on, on the screen with a pair of very dark sunglasses and thinks he's a know-it-all about music. He's got like 8,000 subscribers and calls Irv Azoff a genius and that Fleetwood Mac won't skip a beat and that, you know, uh, Lindsey Buckingham was uh, a bit player. And he's using think. I mean, that was, he was really the inspiration for me to come on here and rage like this because that, that is, a, is an outrageous statement. And uh, from a guy who obviously knows nothing about music, and he's saying, if you're a true fan, you'll support this because of all the different incarnations. Well, yeah, but those were different times. Bob Welsh, when he left the band, he decided to leave. They were in their... 20s what are they gonna do just quit you know they decided to carry on without him and then many many other people i'm just you know he's the name i can think of off the top of my head um but uh anyway i could go on and on and on but you get the gist of this uh, invite your friends over buy some lindsey buckingham music and have a lindsey buckingham party have a fleetwood mac party the old good fleetwood mac and whether it is any of these incarnations, avoid Behind the Mask, avoid Say You Will, forget those albums ever existed. And um, let's really pay attention to who's getting what when it comes to classic rock tours, music, memorabilia, books, t-shirts, you name it. It's all corporate greed. And I, for one, will not participate. So thank you, as always, for watching. I know this is a very different video for me, but I think it was important, needed to be said, and I hope you got something out of it. For now, take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. And this is why I must go.